You look good, Milo. I, I do. Yeah, summer's been good to you. Well, lots of R and R. Yeah, I mean you're like you're fluffy and clean and yes. You seem to have more hair and bigger uh, ears. <laughs> yes, I. People have been saying I look good. Yeah. I, I'm just gonna put all the rumors and chat. That's that's bound to happen to rest. Okay. I have not had any work done. People. No. Oh, geez, we're not converts over. That that was part of my plan. You you just all natural. You yes. Just good, clean living. Clean living. Oh well, he's gonna come over here now. I, I'd like to say I've gone vegan, but look at these birds. <laughs> you you can't give them up. Yeah, I'll keep this guy over here, away from you. You've so been, yeah, you've been doing some good stuff. Birds, here. we're gonna make birds, and not only are we making birds, two birds, two different birds. Um, we are using this tutorial to introduce a new product. So, a couple of new products actually. That that's exciting. Yes. Um, long, long time I've been working on. Well, we're calling it Swax, but it didn't used to have a name. So it's a it's an all natural product. And it's going to come in a bar. It's going to look yummy. And you can um, use, melt this in your um, mug warmer, just like the beeswax. And actually, you use it a lot like the beeswax. But unlike beeswax, it stays, um, it stays soft, and it doesn't, it doesn't flake. So you can actually put it on top of the wool, which when you put beeswax on top of wool, it, it, it crumbles and it flakes and it's generally not good. So this has a couple of other ingredients in it that keep it malleable and smooth and it actually really can press the wool down, smooth it, and you can even kind of buff it and make it shiny depending on how shiny you want it to be. So these little, these little bars are scored so that you can break off a piece, stick it in your mug warmer. But we're going to do more about that, but I just kind of wanted to touch on well, that's, what we're using. That's big news. And then we're going to carry these um, powdered pigments. They're just pure powdered pigments. They work with the Pabrapol. They'll work with the Swax. You can actually mix them with water and paint. Um, they can sort of go into any medium. So they're fun, not just for the needle felting, but just to have on hand if you're an artist or crafter. And um, in the birds, we use the Swax on the, on the legs, toes, and beak. So as we go through the tutorial, I'll show how that works. But we're going to make a chickadee and a bluebird and they're a large, little larger than life size um, but that's okay. It's, it's, it's just a nice, it makes it really nice to work on it. Less tedious than trying to go teeny teeny tiny and the proportions work really well with the wires um, that we use for the legs and feet. So as usual we have a supply pack. It has everything that you need and you can find that in the supply pack section of SarafinaFiberArt.com. And what else do I need to say, Milo? I I don't know. Birds, swax, supply pack. This is a this is a um, I wouldn't call this a be beginner tutorial. I'd say this is you've got a couple things under your belt. You're pretty good at wrapping. Um, getting the legs and toes nice and tight takes practice. So I wouldn't want you to be frustrated with that. But the techniques are really similar to the chick, um, the chick kit. So that would be actually be a good one to start with, and then um, build on this from there. And then once you do these, the same techniques apply um, to all different songbirds, and uh, just need more colors. People might get frustrated with the legs. Yes. But but they will persevere. Yes. Yes. Oh, to good legs. Yes. <laughs> All right, we should get started. All right. Okay. all right, we're all set up to start working. I've got my needles, um, my felting surface, the stab it, wab it. And while we make the armature and go through the supply pack, I have the swax heating up on the mug warmer. So I took one, can you see that? Yes. I took one little square of that bar and I'm letting it start to melt. So that when the armature's finished, we are all ready to start wrapping. So I'm going to show you what's in the supply pack. Some of the colors for the birds overlap. Uh, we just package them together. So it's going to be your job to 
um, separate out what you need for each bird. So I'll go through this a little bit. There are, there's um, one 22 gauge wire. That's gonna get cut in half, one for each bird. And then there's two 32 gauge wires. Each one of these is a set of feet for the bird. And then two pipe cleaners, which makes the um, head, head and body part. So we'll get to that in one second. Go ahead and take your off-white core wool and find the center and split it in half. And what I'm gonna do is just make two piles, uh, one for each bird. Then you have some, about 12 inches of gray core. Uh, go ahead and split that in half. The blue bird gets the blue, the chestnut, and the autumn gold. Yes, all bluebird. This is uh, natural black. This is what I like to use on the legs. So each bird gets half of that. And I'm going to leave one of those here because um, I'm going to get started using that. So I'm actually going to make the chickadee first and the bluebird second. Let's see, black, core, the bluebird needs a little less than the chickadee, so I'm gonna take about a quarter. And I like to split it lengthwise. I feel like sometimes you need a long piece more than you need a short stubby piece. So quarter goes to the bluebird, the rest stays with the chickadee. This is Paulworth. Uh, this is about half and half. It's a really pretty natural color. So I'm gonna split that in half. This is your white, and I'm checking my, this is about one third bluebird, two thirds chickadee. This, since this is nice and long, I'm gonna sp split it, split it this way. So one third bluebird, two thirds chickadee. Sandstone, same thing, one third bluebird, two thirds chickadee. And then gray Shetland, about half and half. And as we do the project, I mean, if you're gonna, as we use stuff, you're gonna have plenty. So if you don't go through this process, you can just use and then you will have what you need for both birds. I just thought it was a little easier to split it up in half. Um, this is a black top and this is m mainly for the chickadee. So I'm gonna kind of put that in the chickadee pile. Okay, let's get started on the armature. You're going to need a nice pair of little sharp scissors because not only do I use it to cut wires, I uh, we, there's some cut trimming on this um, project with these birds. So I'm cutting my 22 gauge in halves. Pardon my reach. I'm going to grab this ruler so it's nice and clear. And then let's go ahead. Let's see. Well, I'll just make one armature, I guess. And then I'm going to find the center. And then from this fold, I'm gonna come down an inch and a half and fold 90 degrees, and then an inch and a half from that and fold. And then this, so this is the leg. This is gonna become the foot. And I wanna use my pliers and make a nice little triangle at the base of the foot. I'm going to fold. I'm going to fold each of them to the outside. It it doesn't really matter, but um, just for consistency. So now I'll do this side. I'm doing like a little kind of three eighths of an inch, or eight, you know, eighth of an inch. I'm sorry, quarter of an inch. What am I trying to say? Yeah, a little less than a quarter of an inch. triangle there because we're going to make these toes the same way that I do hands by looping through uh, this triangle. So the toes are made with the 32 gauge wire 
So if we cut this in half, one half does each set of each foot. It's handy to use um, the digit widget. Reaching for that again. I have all my tools in front of me. This just helps us wrap a nice consistent toe. So I'm going to start, I was torn with this, um, but I figured this is the best way. If I start at the hock with this wire and wrap down whatever way is comfortable to you, it puts a little more bulk on the lower leg, but at least it makes a nice consistent leg versus starting down here and wrapping several times, it gives you a little chunk down here. Now once I get down here, I want to wrap through, or you might want to zoom in on this I part. am already there. Okay. I'm going to wrap through to one side. I'm, I'm starting at the right side, and I'm going to wrap my toes towards the left. And then I like to make a loop, get my digit widget into the loop, and I have to, I have to turn things around here because I'm still like, I haven't used this enough to know exactly how I do it every time. Okay. So I'm leaving the foot open. I haven't closed it. See how it's open there? That way I can just go right in there like that. But I want to make sure that I get it spaced right. Okay. So I've wrapped three toes. Let me get this back down here. Should be good. And I can slide it off. And then I want to close this loop, pinch these down so they don't go anywhere, and then take this 32 gauge wire and really use it to pull the back of the foot closed. And then wrap it up, going the same way, following the same curves so that nothing's bubbled over each other. It's all smooth. And then twist each toe to keep it in place. And then this back toe just gets folded over. Just as little as, little as possible nice little sharp fold. Easy peasy, right? Yes, you, you make it look easy. <laughs> Piece of cake. Okay, do the other one. Go ahead and do both so you can see. Hmm. Let me see, this time I'm come into this left side and I'll go left to right, which is a little bit weird for my hands, but. All right, so I get a loop so that when I put the digit widget in, I can just tighten the loop right down on it. And I just wanna hold the foot in place at the, at the back edge of the digit widget. Then I can do one, Two, get it there. Okay, there we go. Three. And then I'm going to use this to close the foot, come back up the wire in the same direction. I got to work with my left hand here. All right, and then twist these closed. The less you twist them, the less chunky they are. They kind of stay long and skinny if you don't <coughs> twist them quite as much. And then let this follow the same twist as the other wire. So like I said, it makes the lower legs a little thick, but we just compensate by um, getting this wool nice and tight and skinny and putting a little more wool up there. So to finish the armature, you use a 
pipe cleaner, find the center, twist two and a half inches, this took me a little bit, it's, it's less than you than I thought less um, head and body in front of the legs than I thought I was always getting too much out here so I shortened this up quite a bit so just leave like a half an inch for a beak I just use my thumb to indicate the head so I know what's going on and then place the two mountain peaks together and take your pipe cleaner and twist around. You're, you're wrapping around, basically. You're not twisting them together. You're just wrapping the pipe cleaner around and then bringing it together. Twisting this will be the tail. And actually, a good portion of this makes the body. I'll show you on a picture. And then fold the end over so that you don't have a pointy end. You need to fold the other foot end over. Yes, thank you. That would have been a disaster. You would have seen it. It just would have, you know, stopped your flow and you would have had... Thank you, thank you. So what I did was I made these little photographs of the armature and I, I drew the bird on to see, you know, that I was that I was getting things um, in the right place. So that was that was helpful. And it also helped me see the difference between, this is the chickadee, um, between the chickadee and the bluebird a little bit. It's subtle, it's very subtle. Just a few different, a few different steps. So this wax is, I'm gonna actually go ahead and take this out of the way. So the swax is melting, you can see it, and it's okay that it's not all melted. I have enough here to use. Looks like a pad of butter. <laughs> These are called color shapers. They're little silicone tip tools. They come in handy. I've been using them in painting for years, but they happen to work really well for applying the swax, and we sell them in a set of two, a smaller one and larger one, just depending on the size of project that you're working on. And then this is the powdered pigment. I'm going to use black. If you have a bird with, um, you know, RNG legs, we have that too. Now the only thing with this wax is it, it's not clear. It does have some yellow um, to it. Maybe if we get involved with some chemist or something, we can see if we can make a clear swax. But this is where we are for now. So if you have something that you truly want to be white, this will tint it. Um, darker. So I'm going to use the, the little silicone tool to pull some of the powdered pigment out. It's really, it's very potent powdered pigment. <laughs> it's powerful. Um, and then just mix it in and it'll melt right in. Okay. the lid there, Milo. I don't know. I don't That's know either. Weird. There it is. Don't want to leave the lid off of that because if that spilled it would it would be a mess. Alright, this is really melting now. So we're going to use very thin amounts of the natural black. And I like to start by getting a little bit of wool on the lower leg. So I'm actually going to split this in half. So we've got a little four inch by, you know, eighth to quarter inch strip here. And I just want to get some wool on the lower leg. That way, when I wrap my toes, any fuzz that's coming back towards the foot and leg can blend, kind of grab onto and blend into what's already here. Now, if I do this right, I'm going to have enough to go out a toe. Don't worry about it if you don't. If you don't, just pull a little thin strip about that long and start wrapping a toe. This takes practice and hopefully you have done it before. So I take a little bit of swax, I put it on the wire, 
I'm going to get that big gob off my tool next time around. I almost let it cool for just a couple of seconds. If you stick your finger right in it, it um, it's real sticky and you don't want it to be sticking to your fingers and the wool. You want it to stay wh where you put it. And then I press the wool right into it. I got a little bit of a super thin strip here. <laughs> See how skinny that is? Let me see if I can get it going again. I'm not sure if I can. I'm working with like single fiber here. I would rather that have stayed continuous. Is that my way? There we go. I like to be able to return go out to the end of the toe and return. I feel like that just makes it stronger. All right, I'll show you the amounts that I work with for each toe. Just a wisp like that. And sometimes I even just go ahead and pull them, three or four of them, to work with so that I don't have to do it. once I've got my hands going. So I start by going around the foot, just get it anchored, and I pick a toe that I'm going to work on, wrap down towards the end of the toe. Before I get to the end, get this chunk off of here. Put a little bit of swax onto it and press it in. You can even put a little extra swax and kind of squeeze it into a tip so it looks like a little toenail. And then I go back. Until all the fiber is gone. Just keep wrapping and smoothing and twisting. I want to get this off of my, I've got some swax on my finger, and I want to get it off because it is sticky, and I don't want this wool to stick to me. Sometimes I cross in between other toes to get that part of the armature covered. Would you say this is the hardest part of the project? Oh yeah, for sure. So don't quit, people. Don't quit. You gotta start with this. People won't quit. They won't quit. They might be frustrated. <laughs> frustrated by a cute little bird. No, it's, it's not my favorite thing to do. But it looks really good when you do it. And I really like, I really like, I'm going to pull this fuzz off. I really like my projects to be wool versus polymer or plastic or anything else. That's just, that's what I'm doing here. I'm needle felting and I'm working with wool. So that's the way I want to do it. All right, and I just have to get this back toe, and then I'm going to show you how to put the swax on the foot. We need a little comic relief I, I'm, there, I'm, Milo. There's a lot of... Okay, it's known that I kind of go for the dumb joke sometimes. I'll admit that. But there's a lot of dumb bird jokes out there. Yeah. So I'm trying to sift through dumb to find... Clever. Clever. Dumb. <laughs> right. Good enough. Here's a good one. Good enough is what I'm going for. Yeah. Uh, this one's pretty good. What do you call a parrot that flew away? A parrot that flew away. Gone. Almost. You're, you're <laughs> almost there. A polygon. A, a polygon. Oh. <laughs> That's funny. That might be the best I've got, so... Lower your standards. That one's clever, but not funny. <laughs> we, need, we need 
clever and funny. Okay, I've got all my toes wrapped. I'm gonna put another piece of wool on this leg and I'm gonna get a nice piece to work with, wrap the thigh and do the little hock. Then once all that's done, I can put the swax on top and I'm not gonna bore you with the whole other leg. If you need to see it again, rewind. <laughs> Um, so I'm getting, get myself a nice sort of five inch piece. I'm going to go around the body just so I, ha I can pull against something. And I'm going to wrap this upper leg a little bit on the thicker side. It gets, it gets covered with fluff basically. Now I do this all the time, so hopefully you've done another project and seen this in another video. But I make a nice right angle, try to make it sharp, and then I go around one side, come through the angle and around the other side, and I kind of skip the point. And I do that a couple of times, and this just builds up a cute little joint. And then the rest of it. I'm just going to take down and blend and I'm going to twist my armature because I just have a tiny bit of fuzz that I want to smooth out. I can't really wrap it so I've got to roll it. Okay. Now we only have swax on the tips of the toes. So I can take it, put it right on there. It looks a little crazy. Get it on the top. Get it on the bottom, let it cool for just a couple seconds, and then with my fingers just really press it in. If you let it cool the right amount of time, it'll stick to the wool, not to your fingers. If you go in right away with your fingers, it wants to, it wants to stick to your fingers like that. I don't know why. That one just had a lot. See, it stuck to me instead of the wool and so it's instead of becoming smooth this is a good what not to do uh it's it's like pull like it's like pulling off like sticky gum what there's something that you do where you use it to get it do you know what i'm saying <laughs> uh yeah 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 like you got something sticky and so you use the sticky to pull the what am i thinking of is it a cooking thing oh this is that way, so it, it, it'll stick to itself. So if you yes. have it sticky on your fingers, oh, it'll and you go to stuck. squeeze here, it'll get stuck. So you, your hands, have, there we go, now I'm better. Your hands have to be clean. Okay, so I'm actually gonna do the, get a little, oh, I gotta get this. I just got it goopy now. Kinda wanna pull the swax booger off your, <laughs> your tool so that you have a little more control over it. All right, I'm gonna get a little bit on the foot. It's pretty cool, it really holds the wool too. I mean, it's gotta be well wrapped to start. You don't wanna try to put this on top of something that's loosey-goosey and, and then I'm actually gonna do the leg. I'm pretty much doing the lower leg because the upper leg you may still need to needle felt into and um, you don't want your needle getting all sticky and stuck in here. So when I put it on, it looks a little crazy and fuzzy. But if my hands are clean, which they're not, sometimes I do a whole bird without getting any on my fingers. And that's good. But I got goopy this time. Okay. Then I can just press it, press it, press it. Even like... Ooh. Ooh. Get it nice and tight. And it really smooths out. All those wires that are in there kind of just disappear. So that's good. I'll do the other leg. Covered in poison ivy, Milo. Uh, Not that's, covered, that's but bad. enough to make it annoying. Not my fault, is it? 
Actually, it is because of where it is. I know it's because you snuggled me. I can't help. After you ran through it. I can't help myself. <laughs> okay, we're going to do the beak since this is the chickadee. The chickadees have a little bit sh kind of more of a short stubby beak than the bluebirds have like a longer thinner beak. So I'm just keeping that in mind as I as I wrap this. I'm going to work on the bottom half an inch or so. And I can get the work build up the back of the beak a little bit and then as I work towards the tip I'm going to pull really tight try and make a nice point and then angle it back and now I can build up the back of the beak more if I need to but that's about as big as I want it and don't worry if you have a little bit of pipe cleaner sticking out the swax will tighten it all down so this extra, I'm just going to go back on the head because I can I can cover it up easily. I actually need to stab this just a little bit. Hopefully I'm in the yep. frame there. I just want to make sure it's a stronger needle here. Just want to make sure it's nice and tight and actually felted. Okay, and then I'm going to really swax it and then this is sometimes depending on what you're working on the first coat just kind of sinks into the wool you press it in and then the second coat you can really go on top of that and then like even buff it to a shine so this one I'm just trying to get to stick in to the wool here And shape the tip of the beak a little bit, give it a little point. And then once that has cooled a little bit more, I can put more on there if I really want to shine it up. So you haven't used the swax that's sitting there. It can cool, then you can remelt, then yes, it can cool. Yes, you cool, remelt. Your pigment might um, separate out a little bit, so just stir it up. Um, but yeah, you just, so now I have two coats on, and then with my fingers, once it's cool enough, I can kind of slide across it and buff it, buff it shiny. You'll see, I'll show that once it's, <coughs> once it's dry.